The views and opinions expressed on this program do not reflect the company, owners, management, staff, clients, or partners. It's Monday, the eighth day of April, 2023. Welcome to Bermuda's Daily Talk Show. It's the daily hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. I am Jamel Hartman, and Maya Palacio will be with us in a bit to bring you the latest in her news break brought to you by People's Pharmacy. Happy Monday, everybody. You, know, you all know this is my favorite day of the week. And, well, if you love what you do, then... It's probably your favorite day of the week as well, unless you have family and children and you're like, oh, no, now I have to send them back because didn't the children just have holidays and stuff. Now you're going to miss them because they're going back to school. But, man, I love Monday. I'm not joking when I say it. I really do love Mondays. I, I love what I do. I love engaging with you all. Um, I appreciate my breaks and downtime. Don't get me wrong. I do appreciate days off, but I love, love, love Mondays. And that that really happens with most people because people dread going to work. Um, I I swear if we did a survey, anonymous survey, ninety percent of people probably be like, Ugh, "Gotta go back to this place," you know. Um, think about when a holiday is on a Monday. That's when you really realize you don't hate Mondays, you hate your job. <laughs> that's that's real. Anyway, um, happy Monday to you all. Um, how was your weekend? How was your weekend? Let us know how your weekend was. Um, Tanya Cheeseman says, morning, Jamal and Maya. Happy Monday. Kenton Trot says, happy Monday to the H family. Folks, I just want to give a big shout out. Look, I said it to you last week. I was born into North Village Community Club. But as their tweet said uh, last night, like some things are bigger than football. And when, I mean it when I say so much love to PHC, the uh, Russell and Warren family, but also St. George's winning the FA Cup yesterday. I mean, brutally beaten. Uh, uh, my uh, North Village uh, Community Club. And you just think that, you know, John Tay Smith, who, you know, by his father is St. George's, grew up at North Village, um, great game, but has given two seasons, his two seasons back in Bermuda to St. George's. And they had a title fight last year and now winning the FA Cup. And all I can think about is the um, people that they've lost in St. George's. Um, Freddie Hall, former goalkeeper, and Osaji Bascom, you know, PHC with Marco Warren. And, and you think that life is so much bigger than the game itself, right? Um, so I am actually very happy for both of those clubs. Disappointed that my club didn't win. But honestly, you know, there's a spirit inside of these players that they had something to fight for that meant that much more to them. And sometimes there's no overcoming that. And I say that because... I want Noel Village to keep the heads up and, you know, learn from this, right? Learn from this. And uh, once again, congratulations to St. George's. Now, I just want to address a tweet that I had made yesterday because I don't appreciate all you all, you know, you, you, the Bermudian people coming for me. All I said, all I said was, well done, St. George's, well deserved. Now, let's get it together for cop match, please. And all you people want to come for me. Oh, now you're going to tear it and this and that. Excuse me, it's St. George's year. FA Cup, first in history. Now we're going up Somerset to get our Cricket Cup back. I have spoken. The end. All right. Um, <laughs> yes, St. George's says Tanya Cheeseman. And um, Suzanne Ingham says, awesome day, Jamel and Maya. 
All righty. Uh, greetings, everyone, and thanks for making us part of your daily routine. A good one today. We're going to be discussing the red tape uh, consultation and red tape in Bermuda. Um, the daily play is a who said it, so I don't have a co-host today. Someone will be, uh, you know, winning a little something, uh, the opportunity to win something and be eligible for Friday's draw. Um, don't forget to subscribe on our website. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. All right, let's jump into today's conversation. It's a big one. It's a very important one. Um, first off, um, has anyone in the audience, by show of hands, yes or no, have you participated in the government's red tape consultation? Have you participated in the government's red tape consultation? And if you don't know what that is, the uh, premier, um, during his uh, throne speech, um, he, he mentioned that the government uh, was committed to reducing unnecessary and outdated regulations that hinder economic activity. The premier said in the government's efforts to enhance uh, services and foster economic growth, they recognize the importance of streamlining regulations and removing red tape to ensure that Bermuda remains an efficient and business-friendly jurisdiction. He said the government believes in open and transparent consultation and invites you, the public, to participate in this crucial process by voicing your concerns, suggestions, um, suggesting improvements, sorry, and helping identify unnecessary regulatory hurdles. Uh, your insights are invaluable and shaping policies that support efficient government services and economic development will be vital as we take decisive steps to enhance our economic landscape and ensure Bermuda remains a dynamic and welcoming place for businesses to develop. There's an example on the government website. Uh, many government services, uh, service departments are unable to take payments for services provided and customers must currently go to government cashiers and then go back to a department to collect a document or permit. The suggestion is to update processes and systems so all government departments can take payments online and in the office, making operations more efficient and less time consuming. So um, I appreciate the government sharing that example. So the red tape consultation, um, what is it? Uh, basically, um, they're taking your suggestions, feedback. Um, so far, there's been 53 participants with 35 ideas in the current phase. Let me just say, regardless of how you feel about the government, that's quite disappointing, right? Um, too many of us have concerns. You know, I, I remember um, on the back end of the pandemic, Twitter was lit up with people complaining about the passport uh, processing. Like, why is it you can get a passport processed in the UK within four weeks, but a Bermuda passport was taken four to six months, right? I would hope that Bermudians take their concerns from Twitter to this government website. Take your issues to them. This is a perfect, I understand that it may just be politically expedient and politics, but you know, it's like those people, I may disagree with them, but it's like those people who say, just vote. You don't have to vote for either party, but just show up to the ballot and put your ax outside the box or what is it called, spoil your ballot or something. But this is a part of that process. Whether you think it's a waste of time or not, get your concerns out there. All right. So have you participated in the government's red tape consultation? Uh, we've got Tanya Cheeseman says no. Uh, Yolanda Richard says no. Uh, Suzanne Ingham says no, not heard anything. No problem, Suzanne. And that's why we are here. Um, we will um, have that conversation this morning. So here, here's the thing. Um, what, what laws, policies, and or processes do you believe should be reviewed during the red uh, tape consultation? What, what, um, what laws, policies, and or processes do you believe should be reviewed during the government's red tape consultation? What are your thoughts? That's the question of the morning. Um, let's, I'm just going to go and uh, we'll, we'll read some of the ideas that people have had in this first phase. So someone, uh, John Thompson wrote, uh, speeding slash parking fines, online payment, ability to pay fines online. So that's a service they would like to see improve. Payment for all government fees and services online, says Nikki Garrett. Um, simplify converting spouses 
with the right to seek employment visas to work visas. Um, someone says TD, TCD, uh, vehicle ex examination. Um, another person says reduce cost related to illegal drugs. Um, interesting. Another person says, uh, Noel Young says high stamp duties and transfer fees. Another said, eliminate the requirement to advertise the, Roy uh, the Royal Gazette for a work permit. Interesting. Um, convert PRC dependent letters to PRC letters. Um, another says, this is, this is a lot, you all. Work permit applications, Van restrictions, we've got improved PADI process, uh, parental leave, updating employment laws that include mandatory, uh, let me, let's click on this, parental leave not limited to maternity leave. I like that one. All right, so what are your thoughts, audience? What do you have to say? Um, what, what, what laws, policies, and or processes do you believe should be reviewed during the government's red tape consultation? So we've got... Um, I like this. Kenton Trot says all government services should be connected. All government services should be connected. Let, uh, what are some examples of that? Um, your thoughts, Kenton, just to, for the audience. Um, Kenton Trot says shouldn't have to go from one department to another to give them the same information. That's ridiculous. Like, what? Give us an example. Like, what? 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 In what instance would you have to go from one to the other? I remember someone saying you have to leave one building to go to the other. But what's the example of that? Um, Muriel Santushi said she had not heard of the government's red tape consultation, and that's why the Daily Yahweh exists, so that we can discuss it, engage with it, Maya can report on it, um, and we can find ways to improve our, our, our island. Uh, Shamari Talbot says, uh, online traffic fine payment. I agree. I, 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 I'm actually, sh so I've lived in Florida uh, six years this year, six years this year, and I've only been to the DMV, which is Department of Motor Vehicles, which is Florida's version of TCD, once. Once. And that was when I first went to get my license. Everything else, to renew my car, right? To when I bought my car, to uh, change my address on my license, everything was done online. Everything. Everything. Like, I, I cannot tell you the last time I've had to be in a government building. Everything you have the opportunity to do online. Um, it's a bit disappointing and shocking, actually, because I, I think Bermuda, for me, I've always seen Bermuda as an advanced uh, destination. Um, but unfortunately, I guess we're not. We're quite far behind, right? Uh, but what are your thoughts, audience? What are your thoughts? What, what's, what are some things? Like, like what, do you, what do you think? What's something that you believe can be streamlined that we can make better to, to improve um, our functioning in government? Like we saw a story, I think Maya's going to be reporting on Uplift. I don't know the ins and outs of the Uplift story. Um, according to the Gazette, they're urging uh, customers to snap up stock amid legal confusion. Um, so it seems like could be some red tape um, there. But according to the Royal Gazette, um, they posted on Friday um, that this update would mean they would only be able to sell the plant itself and no concentration thereof. Um, all other products would therefore be legal, including their lotions, CBD oil, pre-rolls, and gummies. Um, they said they have no choice but to close both locations in Hamilton until the matter is resolved. Now, again, um, they... They said that um, on Friday, the guidance from the Bermuda Customs Agency interpreted hemp as the plant cannabis sativa or any part thereof with a THC content of not more than 1%. So I, I don't know the ins and outs. Um, we didn't you know, get any comment from them, but maybe that's something that needs to be reviewed. I know, uh, I, 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 I just don't understand. I. I I do my best to read and understand things, but that looks like something that can be reviewed um, for entrepreneurs and people who benefit from those kind of entrepreneurs. But what laws, policies, and or processes do you believe should be reviewed during the 
uh, government's red tape consultation. I'd, I know what I'd like to see reviewed. I would love to see absentee voting for Bermudians who don't live in Bermuda. I, I think that's something that needs to be looked at. I think Bermudians who are, still have an interest in Bermuda but live overseas, just like in the United States, um, I think that they should be able to vote. I think they should have the opportunity to have absentee ballots. That's a, uh, I think it's a policy or a law that uh, should be reviewed. I don't know your thoughts on that. Uh, what else do you think, folks? Uh, Tanya Cheeseman says passport application process online. Um, I know when I applied for my U.S. passport, it was the easiest process. Like my niece's passport, she applied in Bermuda for her U.S. passport to be renewed. And that took like eight days, I swear, right? Um, mine was about two weeks. You do everything online and then you take it to a post office. They verify whatever. In Bermuda, I think you still have to get something written, like someone to verify right on the back of your picture. Is that still the case? Um, and you can't do it online, which I just think is so strange that so many things that would make life easier, not just for us, but also the government, right? Um, I don't know if it's a security thing, why we can't do things online. Um, just unsure, but hopefully, I thought coming out of, out of the pandemic that we would be so much further advanced. But audience, what are your thoughts? What laws, policies, and or processes do you believe should be reviewed during the government's red tape consultation? Now, if you're unfamiliar, if you're unfamiliar, um, the government of Bermuda, um, during the 2024-25 budget um, speech, they announced that they will be um, doing a red tape reduction consultation. So they are basically asking what regulations, laws, or processes are unnecessary or outdated and should be removed to support economic growth and development in Bermuda's economy. All right. So um, I've seen people speak about the um, work permit uh, policies. Like there are people who have applied for work permits for people for, um, you know, there may be a lack of specialists in a certain area and for a business to function properly they're waiting they're waiting for approvals to for like construction sites or businesses are waiting for planning approval to move forward like these are things that impact us even though not directly right they impact our economy but what are your thoughts um so again the government said in our efforts to enhance government services and foster economic growth, we recognize the importance of streamlining regulations and removing red tape to ensure that Bermuda remains an efficient and business-friendly jurisdiction. The government believes in open and transparent consultation and invites you to participate in this crucial process by voicing your concerns, suggesting improvements, and helping identify unnecessary regulatory hurdles. Your insights are invaluable, in shaping policies that support efficient government services and economic development and will be vital as we take steps to enhance our economic landscape and ensure Bermuda remains a dynamic and welcoming place for businesses to develop. All right, so uh, what are your thoughts, audience? I went through some examples of, um, there's been 54 participants, well, no, 54, because I think I said 53 just now, so some of you all may have um, put something in just now, but um, the website to go on is forum.gov.bm, forum.gov.bm to share your concerns um, about things that you have. Someone actually put, Linda Mello says, rejections for planning approval. Um, that was a concern. Eliminate section nine requirement for work permits. So uh, there's a lot of stuff for work permits um, in here. But uh, you know, there's only 35 folks, and based on my um, social media timeline, there should be way more, way more than that number. What are your concerns? Um, take take them to this website. There's laws you all don't agree with. We've had some issues in Bermuda with uh, road collisions, driving under the influence. These are things that we should be considering as well and revisiting. You know, I shared a tweet that caused a big, big kerfuffle yesterday. And um, that tweet was in El Salvador, 
They're now offering 5,000 free passports to highly skilled scientists, engineers, doctors, artists, and philosophers. This will grant them full citizen status, including voting rights, right? Well, I just wrote, interesting, it's a worldwide fight for the best and most talented people. Hmm. Interesting. Folks, what, what do you think? What, what, are, what are your thoughts? What, what laws, policies, and or processes do you believe should be reviewed during this uh, government red tape consultation? Uh, Suzanne Ingham says, uh, land tax, you go to one yielding to get the bill because it's not always sent, then going to go to government building to pay the bill. I should be able to pay where I get bill same place. Absolutely. Thank you for that example, uh, Suzanne. Um, Manuela John says, I don't know if it has changed, but to submit my passport application years ago, I had to go to the Registrar General for birth certificate, Supreme Court for divorce certificate, and bank for payment. That is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, that's ridiculous. But th these, this is why this red tape consultation is so important. Um, let's go to Instagram. I think we have a comment over there. Uh, Janara Robinson says, alcohol restrictions at stores can't buy after 9 p.m. Are you saying that um, we need to revisit them and allow people to buy alcohol after 9 p.m. on Janai Richardson? Robinson, sorry, Janai Robinson. Um, are you saying that we should change that? Um, or it should be restricted even earlier, not allow people to buy alcohol after 5 p.m.? Um, give us your thoughts on that. All right, let's bring Maya Palacio in for Daily Hour News Break. Um, and uh, we'll continue this conversation on the other side. But uh, keep your... Uh, you know, suggestions coming. We, we've got some red tape that we, I, I remember years ago, people would say that, um, you know, they come up with this, these uh, tourism ideas. I remember, you know, someone had an ATV idea and they felt it was shut down, right? And they're like, oh, you know, Bermuda's got a culture of no, right? Culture of no. These are things that we need to consider, folks. Let's bring my applause here for the Daily Hour News Break and uh, we'll be back to continue the conversation. Good morning, good morning. Greetings, MP, how are you? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good this morning. I'm enjoying this conversation. I've been looking through that red tape um, form, so yeah. Interesting stuff though. I, I, I'm i gonna be honest, the, the one I, I, I appreciate a lot of them, but the one that stood out to me most, um, because it was something I started during graduate school. Um, this is where I first learned about parental leave, right? How the United States was one of like two or three countries that had no official federal law on maternity leave. Mm. And, you know, I, that was the time I learned this ain't the great country we, we've been sold that it is um, when you can't even legit consider, you know, the Bureau of Children deserves time to, uh, you know, be with that child and, and, and nurse them and take care of them. And that still exists today. I was in graduate school 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. Damn, I'm old. Parental leave is still um pretty new. Uh, well, at least for like obviously the men in Dude, yeah. Bermuda. Yeah, so they I think they get five days or something like that. And I remember reporting that man could be five or six years ago now. Not even that long. It was during the pandemic, weren't it? No, it was before the pandemic. Really? Um, yeah, it was before the pandemic because I I did a report on it and I I can recall it and where I was and that was before the pandemic. Um. Mm. But um, yeah, so I want to say maybe five or six, four or five or six years ago. I can get the exact date for tomorrow's show. But yeah, it's not, it's not, it hasn't been a very long and it's still only a very limited amount of days compared to what mothers get, which obviously I need for healing, but still together. But however, if you go through like different systems and also depends on where you work, you can get way longer. Like it's a whole ordeal. Um, but yeah, it's still unfortunate. Indeed, indeed. Now I do, I understand that some companies, um, you know, a small business with, probably five employees, so they might have one accountant, one HR person, stuff like that. They may have challenges with that. Um, but I guess that's where you have people, if you have a small business, it's important to have people who can do multiple functions, right? Um, they can do multiple things, like the accountant can help with HR, the HR person can do the, you know, surface stuff, accounting and stuff like that, because it does impact smaller businesses differently. Um, but 
No, that's the one that stood out to me. I mean, anything, I know you just said you went through them. Anything else stood out for you? <clears throat> um, I think what caught my attention was like the tax. Uh, someone said about like going to different buildings. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yep. I, I remember those experiences are quite annoying. You go to one place. Oh, but you need this. You need to go down the road to this place. Okay. So you're like, you're doing all this walking for like one form. And it's just like, okay, I feel like this can all be done in this one building or, you know, online more efficiently. Um, yeah. Some things are quite difficult. Like I, in high school, I found the Bermuda scholarships website so difficult to navigate just in that. So like other forms, as I've gotten older and going into government and trying to figure this out online, I'm like, I'm better at online stuff now, but why is this still so difficult? Like, you know, so just finding an ease, an ease way to get through things, um, especially online, especially with the whole buildings going places to places would be such a significant help. Um, yeah. I think that's freaking crazy. <laughs> like, I, I just think that is probably in 2024 ridiculous i just wanted to um go instagram um a Janai robinson uh said alcohol restrictions at stores can't buy them after nine then goes on to say yes remove them um i absolutely disagree i would say ban alcohol from all stores uh, that's just my personal opinion um and i'll say this in addition to that especially in the black community there's no greater disruptor when it comes to our ability to, ability to function. So appreciate your opinion about eliminating it, probably from an economic standpoint, but from a community standpoint, ban out all alcohol. I'd be total opposite, but sorry, Maya. No worries. All right. So good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is your daily R news break brought to you by the great people at People's Pharmacy. So starting out your news this morning, you may not have actually heard it, but the police did say that on Friday last week, there were seven road collisions and two of which led to injuries. And they are just restating and reiterating to the community to be responsible on these roads and take your time. So that coming from the Bermuda Police Service. Wow. Yeah. I mean, uh, since of the road should make us want to slow down, right? You would think. Well, in other news, yesterday was actually World Health Day. April 7th was World Health Day. I don't know if anyone recognized it or celebrated, but World Health Day marks the anniversary of the founding of the World Health Organization, or WHO, which you would have heard a lot about over the pandemic. Back in 1948 is when they set up, and each year they focus on a specific public health concern. So for me to join the international community in raising awareness of the right to health, according to the World Health Organization Council for the Economics of Health, for all, at least 4.5 billion people, more than half of the world's population, were not fully covered by essential health services in 2021. So the Minister of Health, Kim Wilson, went on to give a statement about World Health Day, saying, quote, we are fortunate in Bermuda to have legal protections for workers that ensure employers provide health insurance to employees working over 15 hours per week. The Ministry of Health continues to make advances to address the gaps in services to those who are under or uninsured in the community. As outlined in this year's throne speech, renovations are underway for the Mango Bay Clinic to offer services to people where they are most needed. Um, serious question, is the Mango Bay Clinic gonna be a new clinic or does it, is it something that already has existed? It had, well, renovations, it had to, to have existed before in the past, I guess, underused and not quite used very well. So looking forward to see what those renovations are going to be, when it ends, who actually needs it and who would have benefit uh, within that community and who will actually use it would be. Got it. Yeah, okay. something we want to look forward to hearing more about. All right, meanwhile, the public is reminded, as we were talking about this morning, about needing to submit feedback in the red tape reduction consultation, which is currently live at forms.gov. Dot VM. So last month, the Premier launched the consultation process with the goal of hearing directly from the public about what regulations they feel can be reduced, streamlined, or made more efficient. So here's kind of what he had to say and also some of the things that have been said throughout it. Some may ask, why is the government going to the people? They should know what the issues are. Mr. Speaker, I can understand that perspective. But the truth is that governments do not have the same interaction internally within the government that the public may have, and the experience will be different. We want to hear directly from those affected about the obstacles faced and receive recommendation on processes that can be streamlined to reduce frustrations or multiple points of contact with the government to accomplish tasks. Some of the comments and ideas given back on the form.gov.bm are to speed up the process for building permit applications, 
The ability to pay fines online, not necessary to go to police department to get ticket and then cashier's office to pay. Another says it is currently very difficult to receive a forecast of the government's social insurance pension payable at 65 years. Additionally, there is no transparency and no response on how the final amount is calculated by those responsible. A dashboard should be available for all users to be able to view what their contributions will actually translate to on retirement. Having this automated will free up staff to do value and add work rather than admin inquiries, as well as giving comfort to users, the taxpayers, that they are are about to receive or receiving the correct amount from government. I mean, I, I appreciate that, you know, I'm not gonna, it could just be politics, but I appreciate that it's happening. Um, my concern, you know, and this is, this is what I would like to see from the government. Stop acting like things have to take so long to get done. So these folks have all these ideas. It shouldn't take another five to 10 years to get, get them through a door. Let's speed up the process. Some of this stuff is already lo- like 20 years overdue. Mm. Let's just get it done. And let's be real. You were elected by the people to do some of the thinking and do the work. If you're in tune with your people, while we appreciate this consultation, you should already know what it is. They shouldn't have to tell you, get things online, streamline the process, fire people in the civil service who ain't doing their jobs in a timely manner. Oh, I said it. Well, just a reminder for everyone who wants to still submit their, you know, ideas, concerns, you have until April 30th. So to the end of this month to get that going again, form.gov.bm. All righty. Right now, I think I think I said there's been 35 ideas, folks. Let's get that up, please. I encourage you, I encourage you to submit as many as possible because we know. Just forget uh, social media. We know just from the conversations we have on this show that you all have a lot of concerns. Now, moving on to some more red tape, as Jamal mentioned a bit earlier on. So Uplift Bermuda has reported that the Bermuda Customs Agency has issued guidance that seeks to shut down their operations completely. They say, quote, the guidance provided the following inter- interpretation that hemp means that plant cannabis, sativa, or any part thereof with a THC content or not more than 1%. So now this update will mean that they would only be able to sell the plant itself and no concentration thereof. All of their products would therefore be illegal. Now the company says they have no choice but to close both of their locations, their second location only having been opened late last year. Now in a report from the Gazette, Uplift said that they do not know whether or not this will be reversed. They will, and then they are encouraging, you know, the customers to clean up their store and make all purchases as they close down. Now also being released, from a new, a new company, sorry, uh, looking to establish in Bermuda called Al Chill has uh, shared a message that says, quote, I packed up my life temporarily in another country, came back to Bermuda to set up the business. I've invested endless amounts of time and money getting everything set up. I've quit and turned on various promising full-time employment positions. Our online store is 99.9% ready to be launched on alchill.bm and .com. Now customs and government wants to put us out of business in our first weeks of operation. Now, that is all that has been reported as of late in the exact contact of the, co- the government with no response by their publication time. The two companies were only informed via email from customs, and there has been no report from government since these posts were made public. Also, you may be familiar with another company in Bermuda called Best Buds Bermuda. I think we actually, someone actually mentioned it last week on the show, but still no, no press release or statement has been made from this organization as of yet as well. But I will keep everyone updated in light of the situation. Here, here's what I'd like to see. Can you put that uplift thing back up real fast? Uh, uplift, sure. Um, I see a lot of what you can do for them, right? Mm-hmm. And as I look at this, I would have loved to have seen from Uplift, and audience, tell me if I'm wrong, tell me if I'm wrong, but I would have loved to see Uplift share why it's important you support them. Because it really comes across to me is 
They're just looking for somebody to keep them in business, not that this business is here to help and serve them and to benefit. So I think, you know, when you're fighting for something that's been stigmatized for so long, maybe it's on you to explain why this benefits Bermudians and why it's not just another thing that's going to disrupt progress uh, for Bermudians. So what are the health benefits Bermudians will lose an old one by this being shut down? What are, what are the social benefits? Thanks, Maya. All right, of course. Uh, and next story that I have for you guys today is that you can anticipate a glimpse of a partial solar eclipse today on Monday, uh, late in the afternoon, with almost half the sun blocked by the moon in Bermuda. Now, we will not experience a full eclipse like those in Niagara and Canada and other places northern, surely, but those who are interested should be able to see a partial solar eclipse with the moon covering as much as 46.7 percent of the sun so nearly half the eclipse is expected to peak at 4 34 p.m today 4 34 p.m today uh with the moon being its passage in front of the sun at around 3 26 it'll kind of start but at the peak it'll be at 4 34 and concluding at 5 37. now what's mm. interesting though in niagara is that the state of a state of emergency was actually called due to a significant influx of persons and tourists which has led to debate about the abuse of power here's a quick clip from the news the eclipse was overshadowed by a proactive state of emergency declared by the niagara regional chair in response to the expected crowds now a legal challenge, a charity claims that was unlawful and filed a notice of application for judicial review, claiming with this precedent set, there would be nothing to prevent municipalities from declaring an emergency on every New Year's Eve, every major film and music festival. Your civil liberties can be harmed when, uh, when emergencies are declared there are not real emergencies. Interesting. Indeed. Interesting battle. We'll see what comes out of that. But yeah, the calling state of emergencies when they're not necessary, definitely an abuse of power there, but we'll find out more. It's fascinating what excites different people, though. I'll say that much. <laughs> Indeed. So if anyone's looking out to actually get a picture of the eclipse in Bermuda, would love to see it. I'm going to try to look it up here in Toronto. But in some transport news, Bermuda did mark their inaugural flight to D.C. with American Airlines last week. And the minister, Owen Dow, actually said, quote, on a post, congratulations to the minister of transport for all your hard work to make this happen, especially Minister Wayne Ferbert. So that's something new there for our flights. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. In our sports related news, the Bermuda Aquatics athletes ranked up more than 20 medals in this year's 2024 Carifta Aquatics Games in Bahamas. And also you would have heard over the weekend that St. George's won the FA Cup, defeating North Village at a staggering score of 4-0 with Jonte Smith scoring a hat trick and one goal coming off the foot of Captain Hall, who led his team to their first FA Cup trophy. Hey, I'm just saying, once again, honestly, congratulations to St. George's. Um, but um, you know, you all know what this means. The first FA Cup, you all better watch out cup match time. Cup coming back east. This is St. George's year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just want to put that out there. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, I've spoken. We will see. And also closing out with the story of dreams as South Carolina beat Iowa 87 to 75 to win its third NCAA Women's Championship. That did happen if you were tapped into March Madness and women's basketball. So Johnson had 19 points, Cardoza put up 15, and the team crashed Iowa's hope for its first championship title. And South Carolina coach Dawn Staley was emotional after the win for sure. Man, I, so I watched that game. Um, I was watching um, the game, the North Village and Georgia's game on my uh, TV, and I was watching the Carolina and Iowa game on my phone until I realized North Village game was just done. I just turned that on and caught the whole second half of my TV. And I must say, man, um, I, I love sport. I love sports, right? Um, you don't have to tell me it's men or women, right? I've been, I was watching the WNBA when it first started when Cynthia Cooper was running things, right? Um, down in Houston Comets when they existed and they won those championships in the early going. Um, whether it's media hype or not, I absolutely love um, how Caitlin Clark has grabbed the attention of a nation. Um, mm -hmm. I love what she's done. But to me, the bigger story is the work that Dawn Staley has done. As I put on Twitter last night, it's not normal to lose your entire starting lineup and though then go undefeated the following season 
and win a championship. To me, that's just a bigger story. That's not to say Caitlin Clark doesn't deserve her the, her flowers because she's an extraordinary. Like I mean, she she is as they say the woman Steph Curry, right? I'd rather her be the Caitlin Clark, right? But Dawn Staley is just amazing, man. And if you 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 watch sport and understand the psychology of it and how she actually responds to adversity during games. Um, the game before that, who was it against? NC State, not NC State. Who did they, whoever they played before, that game that I watched in the um, Final Four, they blew them, it was NC State, blew them away second half. That's coaching. And what she did yesterday, I mean, she put, um, I think it was Johnson on Caitlin Clark after yep. the first quarter. Shut her down. There's a story here, though. There's a story here because I remember when Iowa eliminated South Carolina last year. The disrespect from Iowa and Caitlin Clark. Everyone's been talking about Iowa getting revenge on LSU. That wasn't the revenge story. The revenge story was South Carolina were undefeated last year, and they lost to Iowa, who then went on to lose to LSU. The revenge story was the disrespect by Caitlin Clark to that same player who shot her down for three, three quarters yesterday. Mm -hmm. There's lessons in this, folks. That young lady apparently wanted to quit basketball. She ended up shutting down probably, arguably, the greatest, if not one of the greatest, college basketball players in the history of the game. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, a championship. There's lessons in that. Mm -hmm. I will say, like, Coach Dawn, like, again, so respectful, humble, amazing, amazing coach. She actually had these words to say uh, after the game, which still applauded her own team, obviously, but also gave recognition to Kate. Congratulate Iowa on an incredible season. Awesome, awesome. And I, I want to personally thank Caitlin Clark for lifting up our sport. Her, she, carried a, she carried a heavy load for our sport. And it just is not going to stop here on the collegiate tour. But when she is the number one pick in the WNBA draft, she's going to she's going to lift that league up as well. So so Caitlin Clark, if you're out there, you are one of the goats of our games. And we appreciate you. Yeah, I love that. When I watched it live, I was just like, I loved every bit of what she said, because mm -hmm. real recognize real. You know, yes, it's competition, but. The, the level of respect that she should. And even in, in winning, her players, you know, like when they got arrogant, she kept them humble. She's like, well, if we were that great, we wouldn't have blown a 21-point lead. Like she, Dawn Staley is that person. <laughs> she is that person. I don't, um, I don't know how you can dislike her. I do think that she gets treated unfairly by the media, asks questions that mm. they won't ask others. Yeah. Like, very, if you follow it, folks, like just seriously unfair questions, but that they won't ask other people. She's she's got a hard enough time as a black woman enough, but I love the way she handles stuff, and I love the way that she is always willing to eat. the way that she responded to the, the fight between her players and LSU. That's how the other coach responded. She is just a class act, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm a Dawn Staley fan. <laughs> Well, let's close out with some Bermuda weather here. So today looks like a mix of sun and clouds despite a couple of passing showers. Winds northern, a bit strong as well. So just be prepared for that in the late afternoon. And we got a high of 66 degrees Fahrenheit today. And again, the eclipse, which will be around 4.30 p.m. So, you know, take a look at that half moon that will be showing uh, on island. All righty, my days of the year. So you did World Health Day yesterday. But today is actually um, draw a picture of a bird day. And it's a very interesting way how this came about history of draw a picture of a birthday um actually dates back to uh 1943 during world war ii a seven-year-old girl named dory cooper visited her uncle who was a wounded soldier in a hospital in england while she was there she was she asked him to draw a bird as she thought it might help to cheer him up and lighten his mood that's how it came about did it <laughs> Well, hold on now. Tragically, Dory was killed in an automobile accident just three years later. And because the story of Dory's inspiration has been told, there were many drawings and pictures of birds at her funeral brought by soldiers, nurses, and doctors. So, oh, yeah, Draw a Picture of a Bird Day was celebrated on Dory's birthday on April 8th, 
1947, the year following her death. Said, but that audience, what's your favorite bird? What's, what's your favorite bird, Ma? I don't want to be basic, <laughs> but only because it was my team name for Phil Rocky, so I have to say long tails, but I do still like the kiskity. <laughs> okay. Um, and audience, please don't be childish and say a chicken in your plate. But um, I would say my favorite bird is a parrot because they can talk back. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've always been fast with yeah. parrots. Flamingos are cool too, because technically they're not really that pink, but when they get like that, that it's, it's, it's kind of cool. So Yeah, they look pretty. What's your, do you have a favorite audi um, bird audience? Let us know. Mike, we're going to take a break. Thank you so much for today. And folks, if you appreciated today's conversation, discussion, and news break, give us a thumbs up. We're going to take a break. We'll continue the conversation real shortly when we come back. But let us know your favorite bird in the meantime. See you tomorrow, Mike. Bye. All righty. Stick with us. Do not go anywhere. Let's face it, life can be a little <laughs> wild, but shopping doesn't have to be. I choose Peoples so that whether it's a prescription that needs to be filled, a toy for my little terror, or a gift for a new addition to the family, um, we'll see about that. Everything's available in one convenient location. Some call it Peoples. I call it my one-stop shop in the city. Peoples, we're here for you. Welcome to the new bulk store, Lindo's Next Level. Wake up in the morning with enough coffee to keep you running throughout the entire day. Your pet at home deserves the best. Stock up on dog food to keep your puppy happy. Need a quick tasty lunch at home? Your chicken nuggets will be jumping right out of the freezer. What's a movie night without popcorn? You can never have too much. Lindo's Next Level. Why go anyplace else? It took 14 days to build your business plan. Six months to build the courage to leave your day job. Three weeks to find the perfect location. It took 10 days to outfit your space just right. And one day before your first client walked in the door. All totaled, it took you a full year to get your business operational. And this is just the beginning. To the entrepreneurs, the risk takers, the people that shape our economic community, we salute you and are here for you every step of the way. BEDC, providing knowledgeable, progressive, professional, and innovative support to Bermuda businesses. Alrighty, welcome back to the big show. Jamal Hartman, it's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. Please do not forget to subscribe on our website, thedailyhour.com. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Before we went to uh, Broad and Maya for the news break, we did uh, have a question about the red tape. Um, and I guess the question now is, now that you know about the red tape consultation, will you be submitting suggestions? Yes or no? Now that you um, have an idea of what the red tape consultation is about, will you be submitting um, some suggestions or recommendations? Let us know in the audience. Um, regarding uh, Coach Dawn Staley, uh, Kathy Rogers says, I agree, Jamal, Coach Dawn is a great coach. Um, and uh, Nana Pamela Wade says bluebird is her favorite bird. So we've got some bird people out there and happy bird day as a draw bird day as well, folks. But let us know now that you know, would, will you be um, submitting one? Uh, we've got um, some other suggestions. Anthony Pete says um, one of his uh, suggestions would be providing a special services agent at all departments. We have families and adults impacted with a variety of things, autism, hearing impairment and sight. I like that. Anthony Pete, please submit on the website, I think it's forum.gov.bn, please submit this. Um, Manuela Johnson, retirees should be able to submit annual proof of life certificates online. That is a form to be signed by pensioner and witness, e.g. pastor. Yeah, um, I think online's the way to go. Uh, Kenton uh, Trot says, uh, for a criminal record check, you have to pay at one location, apply at another and pick up the letter from another. That's That was his example from earlier of oh, people going to different 
um, places. So Charlotte Fox says, nope, she still won't, uh, will not uh, submit a recommendation for the red tape consultation. Can I ask why? Why won't, why won't you support it? If you know it's going to make a difference and make life better and ma improve the processes and uh, policies and laws, why wouldn't you submit something? B do you think it's just politics? You don't think it's real? Um, explain it. Because I know some people just feel it's politics. Nothing's going to improve. Nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to make life better for Bermudians. But what? why is it? Why do you feel that way? Why do you feel that way? What, what, what's, what are your thoughts on that? Um, my hope, you know, and, and thank you so much to Maya for sharing um, her, uh, you know, the feedback on the red tape consultation. But I, I mean, there's 54 participants, it says, and 36 now. So you guys have added, it looks like um, some more, but and 36 as of now, um, ideas or contributions and someone just put up uh, health insurance uh kelly madeiras uh 20 seconds ago says change the law so that if someone can prove they have health insurance through their spouse they don't have to waste money and be on hip all right so that that's a good one um what else though folks what else what are some things that you think should be um, submit it. Uh, Charlotte Fox says no, because nothing's going to change. And I understand that. Honestly, it's the argument I have, Charlotte Fox. It's the argument when I say, no, I'm not voting. And people say, well, at least go and, and spoil your ballot. And I'm like, why? And then people use the argument, well, at least they know you made the effort to come. What does that really do? Well, it, it makes them understand that people were willing to... To, my, to, my, to me, no one has still proven why it makes more sense to spoil a ballot versus not showing up. I, I've heard people try to explain stuff, but it still, it sounds good, it sounds cliche, but it still has not convinced me to make me believe that's the way to go. But again, not saying I agree with Charlotte Fox, but I completely understand your why you feel that way, um, that nothing's changed. Um, Suzanne Ingham says she just feels it's all politics. Election is coming soon. And I, I think I said that when it, you know, was first announced during the um, budget speech that it does seem like it's just politics, right? It seems like, oh, they're, they're saying this now, but it's, it's just politics. It's all politics. Um, so I completely understand you. All right, folks, let's take a final break. Um, we'll come back. We'll do the, um, well, we're, we've got a giveaway today, uh, the um, daily play. So if you get this right, the first person to get the answer correctly on my screen, will get a um, the opportunity to be eligible for this week's prize. And also, um, we'll uh, have the daily inspiration as we wrap it up. So don't go anywhere. This might be your chance to be the first person entered in this week's draw. Stick with us. We'll be back after this. In the meantime, make sure you give us a love, a like. Um, just take one, during the commercial, just take a quick minute to like it, love it, and share the conversation because too many of you said this morning, that you did not know about the red tape consultation. Share this conversation so that more people know. Our population is so much more than 36 contributions. Do not give your government an excuse not to make things better for you. Considering the increasing challenges faced by financial institutions exasperated by market volatility, the need for insurance protection is a critical component of the risk management framework. At Friesenbrook, our priority is to safeguard your assets with the most optimal and cost-effective risk management cover. Therefore, we deliver a full suite of competitive insurance products to protect your business. Call us on 296-3600 to learn more about our broking services. Hi there, welcome to Madaku House. We're located at number six Bakery Lane. I can't wait to show you all of the great stuff that we carry. Come on inside, let's see. Long days, long shifts, you no longer have to endure comfortable underwear. Designed by Narcissus, we now offer premium undergarments by Swoop that are unique, fun, comfortable, and functional. The only underwear you'll ever want to wear. Who says high quality functional products can be stylish and comfortable at the same time? All righty, welcome back to the big show. Thanks again to the BAC group of companies, Medical House Lindos and People's Pharmacy for ensuring we can have these conversations with you on a daily basis. Um, again, folks, please, if you appreciated the news break, the conversation discussion this morning, give us a thumbs up, a love, a like, 
on whatever platform you're tuned in on. And please ensure that you're sharing these conversations with your friends, your family, your colleagues. It is time for the, da the Daily Play brought to you by Bermuda Trivia, now available at stores throughout Bermuda. Follow Bermuda Trivia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out why it's Bermuda's favorite trivia game. All right, audience, it is time. Where is, oh, here it is. All right. First person to get the answer correctly on my screen will be eligible for this week's prize. All right. Quote, if you can't feed a hundred people, then feed just one, end quote. This was by an Albanian, Albanian Indian Catholic nun. Who was she? Stacey Ann Brown showed up on my screen first. Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa it was. She said, if you can't feed 100 people, then feed just one. Stacey Ann Brown, you be in it. You be in it. We, we, we appreciate that. Um, so let's make sure we um, get Stacey Ann Brown up in there for this week. So she's eligible. I think she won last week, too. Buddy, you got you got to step it up. Don't you know? Um, I mind you, all this did get it right. Emily Gildil did get it right as well as Rosalind Famous, um, but it was Mother Teresa. All right, folks. Um, look, to wrap it up, I just want to say this. I get why some people don't want to participate in the consultation process. Um, I I do. But if it's one thing I've learned when it comes to politics and government, is you don't want to give them ex an excuse to not do the work that they should be doing for you. Um, we know that you have so many more concerns than the 36 that are listening. You do. You have so many more concerns than the 54 people who are participating so far on gov.forum. I said it before, I'll continue to say it. This is a great place for us to have dialogue, the daily hour. It is. Unfortunately, we must sometimes go into spaces to share our concerns so that they can't say they didn't know. So I would encourage every Bermudian, whether it's the passports or online processing systems, work permits, parental leave, environmental challenges, whatever it is, please, I encourage you to go and participate in this process. Participate in it. Or if you choose not to, if you think it's just politics, then ensure that these are not the folks representing you as your government the next time around. All right, daily inspiration. Um, I'll leave you with that Mother Teresa quote. If you can't feed 100 people, then feed just one. I take from that, hey, you may not be able to change the entire world in one go, but bit by bit, you can make a difference. Please do not forget to subscribe on our website, thedailyhour.com. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Thanks again to our partners, the BAC Group of Companies, Medicals, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we were to do this with you on a daily basis. As always, we appreciate you, we love you, and we thank you for making this part of your daily routine. If all goes well, we'll be back to do this again with you tomorrow. I'm Jamal Hartman. Please do make it a safe and a great day. We are is out. Peace.